I'm Dave Kassler, KE0OG, with Episode 9 of Ask Dave. I'm here to answer your questions about amateur radio, geared toward those new to the hobby. Today's topic comes from a question submitted by Pete Stevenson, KG7KCH, and asks how amateur call signs are assigned. Pete, thanks for your question. Let's take a closer look. I've held four call signs, all listed here. They all have something in common with all amateur radio call signs. They're composed of a prefix, a number, and a suffix. Each of these has meaning. The prefix indicates the country. In this case, call sign prefixes beginning with W or with K are assigned to the United States. The suffix refers to the specific license. Note that my current call sign, KE0OG, is a two by two call sign, meaning two letters in the prefix and two in the suffix. WB6GBT is an example of a two by three call sign. In the United States, the numbers represent the call area. Note that my first call, WN7AIU, was issued when I was a student at BYU in Utah. Utah is in the seventh call area. Then I moved to California and upgraded to general. I received WB6GBT. The sixth call area is the only call area with just one state in it. I upgraded to advanced and received KD6SH. When I moved to Colorado, I was still an advanced class ham and requested a zero call sign. I was assigned the call I have today, KE0OG. Call sign area one is New England, two is New York and New Jersey, three is Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Delaware, four is much larger with several states, as is five. Seven covers several states, nine covers Wisconsin, Illinois, and Indiana, and eight covers Michigan, Ohio, and West Virginia. I point out that the area assigned a zero is in fact the tenth call area. The FCC also assigns special prefixes and numbers to Alaska, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, and various U.S. holdings around the world. All U.S. call signs begin with one of the following four classes of prefixes. These are assigned to the United States by the International Telecommunications Union, or ITU, which is an international organization. I note in passing that this prefix assignment covers everything in the USA, including radio and television stations, and even aircraft identifiers. But back to the amateur call signs. The prefix can be AA, AB, AC, or anything up to AL. Note that anything beyond AL is assigned to other countries. Any prefix beginning with the letters K, N, or W all indicate the United States. You can tell the country that assigns a call sign by its prefix. For example, anything starting with G is the UK. Anything starting with DA through DR is Germany. EA through EH is Spain, and so on. There are also some oddities, such as M is the UK. Note that some prefixes actually start with a number. For example, a call starting with 9Q is in the Congo. Anything starting with B is China. Canadian hams are usually VE, but can be anything from VA to VG or VO or VX and VY. The ARRL maintains a list of amateur call sign prefixes on its website that matches the ITU mandated list. As you can see, the list is long. A few decades ago, the FCC came up with a call sign assignment system it calls systematic. The idea was that you could tell an operator's license class by means of the call sign. Well, it hasn't worked that way, but they still do use the system. Let's look at allowable amateur extra call signs. Regions 1 through 10 are the continental U.S. A K, N, or W 
and a two-letter suffix is an extra call sign. For example, W1AW. Or it can be inverted, such as a longtime friend, NV0M. Also allowed is a two-letter prefix starting with A, plus two letters in the suffix, such as AB1CD. The 11th district is Alaska, and note the L in the prefix. P is for Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. H is for Hawaii and Pacific Territories. Now, here's something important. Unless you're going for a vanity call sign, the suffixes are assigned by the FCC in linear order. They do not go back to pick up long abandoned call signs. Assigning the call signs in order is part of their so-called systematic process. All of the possible amateur extra call signs have been issued. So, if you jump to amateur extra class in your first try, your systematically assigned call sign can't be issued from this pool. So, they go to the next lower pool, the advanced. My call sign is a two-letter prefix starting with K, in fact, K-E, my district, zero, and my suffix, O-G. So, my call sign indicates an advanced class license. Except for one thing. When you upgrade, you can elect to keep your old call sign. And I did that when I upgraded to Amateur Extra. Now, let's get down to the general and tech. All the KNW 1x3 licenses have been issued. A person I know is N0ZTQ and was one of the last to get a so-called tech call sign. So now they're issuing call signs with a two-letter prefix starting with K plus a three-letter suffix. For example, KA5BCD, or in some areas, they're up to KK and above. When they finish with these, they can use N or W. It used to be that two by three call signs for generals started with a W. But you see that the FCC has revised the system to lump techs and generals together. So when you upgrade from tech to general, you will likely simply want to keep your old call sign. It used to be that if you moved from one call sign district to another, you had to get a new call sign. That is no longer true. I could have kept KD6SH, but that has California written all over it. So I decided when I moved here to change. I made that change voluntarily to KE0OG. So that explains call signs. Just one last thing, and that is the vanity call sign program. You can ask the FCC to change your call sign to one that is either not yet assigned or to a call sign that is no longer in use. For example, if your grandfather was W5WWW and he's been dead for a number of years, you can apply for his call sign. When unused call signs are first released into the pool for the vanity call sign program, relatives have first crack. But then, after a while, they're opened up to anyone. And that's about it for call signs. There are, of course, little complexities, but for the vast majority of call signs, that's how it works. I want to encourage all new hams to join the ARRL. Here's an example of an article that would be of great interest to all hams found on page 36 of the October 2015 QST. It describes five myths of propagation. Does this sound interesting? If you're a member of the ARRL, you get QST every month. Join up now. Our photo for today is topical. In 2015, the EPA was doing remediation work on an old mine north of Silverton, Colorado, which is not far south from here, and accidentally punched through a barrier. Millions of gallons of water carrying many toxic compounds were immediately dumped downstream, making a mess of the Animas River. I took this picture from a road on the other side of the canyon. At that point in time, the EPA had put in some settling ponds, 
one of which is visible in the photo. It's kind of exciting to live near a place that makes the national news, isn't it? Please subscribe so you can get notification of future videos. If you wish, you can also put something in the tip jar, either using the YouTube method or the PayPal link on my website at ke0og.net. Send questions to me via a comment to this video or directly at ke0og.net slash ask hyphen Dave. Until next time, 73.